So today we're going to be looking at this book right here. What does the Bible really teach? And uh, I've been given this book a few years ago and we were trying to go through it and I was really interested in what the Bible does really teach and so I was reading this book with some uh, fellows from the Kingdom Hall local nearby where I live and I always had the question of uh, you know come to page 12 here and it says God wants you to know who he is so I'll read a little bit of the uh, book from the book and we'll discuss some of the questions here as we go along so I, I come down here on uh, page 12 and it says God wants you to know who he is of course and paragraph 14 we read if you want someone to get to know you what might you do would you not tell the person your name? Well, sure. You would tell the person your name. Does God have a name? Is this a question? Well, sure, God has a name. Many religions answer that his name is God or Lord. But those are not personal names. Obviously, those are titles. Right. They are titles just as king and president are titles. The Bible teaches that God has many titles. God, Lord are among them. However, the Bible also teaches that God has a personal name. And we see right here after the colon Jehovah as God's personal name. Psalm 83 verse 18 says you whose name is Jehovah you alone are the most high over all the earth then it goes on to say if your Bible translation does not contain that name Jehovah you may want to consult the appendix on page 195 through 197 of this book to learn why that is so. And we may do that later or, you know, I may not. I haven't, gone, I haven't gotten that far. I haven't thought about it yet. But, uh, so anyway, it goes on to say, the truth is that God's name appears thousands of times in the ancient Bible manuscripts. So Jehovah wants you to know his name and to use it. In a sense, he is using the Bible to introduce himself to you. Well, absolutely, because how, how do we know who God is unless he reveals himself to us? We wouldn't know who God is unless he revealed himself. We wouldn't properly know anyway so Jehovah wants you to know his name and to use it in a sense he is using the Bible in a very real sense he is using the Bible to introduce himself to you okay so in that paragraph we know that we introduce ourselves to a person by telling them what our name is and 
God has a name because through his word he introduced himself and as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society makes the claim his name is Jehovah so down at the bottom here it says what is God's name and why should we use it for questions at the bottom of the page for paragraph 14. So what is God's name? Well, the Watchtower claims that Jehovah is God's name. And why should we use it? say why we should use the name Jehovah it just says that God wants us to know his name and to use it in that paragraph which that question is asking from that paragraph so we will investigate further um, from paragraph 14 what is God's name that was the first part of the question for paragraph 14 so what what is God's name well the watchtower says God's name is Jehovah if we look in some of Watchtower publications, like Insight on the Scriptures, page 7, where it says Jehovah, we're looking at page 7. Seven here, and if we go down where it says, What is the proper pronunciation of God's name? We read in the second paragraph, uh, Hebrew scholars generally favor Yahweh as the most likely pronunciation Yahweh Hebrew scholars hmm. they point out that the abbreviated form of the name is Yah or Ja in the Latinized form as at Psalm 89, 8. And in, and in the expression hallelujah, meaning praise Jah or praise Yah, you people, from Psalm 104, verse 35, and 150, verses 1 and 6. Also the forms of Yahoy, Yahoyo, Yah and Yahu, found in the Hebrew spelling of the names of Jehoshaphat, Jeho Joshaphat, Shephatiah, and others, can all be derived from Yahweh. Greek transliterations of the name by early Christian writers point in a somewhat similar direction with spellings such as Abe, Eowie, I don't even know how to 
pronounce it. Yahui, which is pronounced in Greek resembling Yahweh. Yahweh well, resemble Yahweh. Still, there is by no means unanimity among scholars on the subject, some favoring yet other pronunciations such as Yahua, Yahua, or Yehua. But the Hebrew scholars generally favor Yahweh. Yahweh. Y A H W E H. So that is found in Insights. On the scriptures page 7 volume 2 and if we go and if we go back even further in aid to Bible understanding page 884 to 885 and we go down and we read the pronunciations of Jehovah and Yahweh and it says by combining the vowel signs of Adonai or Adonai and Elohim with the four consonants of the Tetragrammaton, which is the Yod He Vav He, the Hebrew letters, the pronunciations Yahuwah and Yahui were formed. The first of these provided the basis for the Latinized form Jehovah. The first recorded use of this form. Now, this is the first recorded use of Jehovah. Dates from the 13th century common era. By a Ramundus Martini, a Spanish monk of the Dominican order. So, and it used it in his book, Pugio Fide, Fide, Fidei. Or what, I don't know how to pronounce these words. Of the year 1270. So, in 1270, the word Jehovah was invented. Now, wait a minute. So prior to the prior to twelve seventy AD AD twelve seventy the word Jehovah didn't exist. The first recorded use was in twelve seventy. Okay. So if it didn't exist prior to 1270, why are we supposed to use it again? book is called what does the Bible really teach so what does the Bible really teach uh, 
uh, will be extremely interested in hearing what the Bible really teaches. So this has been, this is a, uh, a series of videos I've been thinking about, you know, going through this book. And right away, we come to, you know, God wants you to know who he is. So... Let's find out who God is. Thank you.